If you have Achilles pain and you're only doing heel raises or calf raises, maybe in double leg or even single leg to get rid of the pain by strengthening the Achilles, that's good, but you are missing a big portion of that Achilles rehab. Today I'm gonna to show you four different exercises you can add on to a double leg or single leg heel raise or calf raise so you can start to strengthen and stabilize the foot and ankle and also start to strengthen that Achilles in an eccentric load, which is exactly what we want so we can start to get rid of that pain. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa. I'm a physical therapist and run coach that has helped thousands of runners prevent and treat injuries. If you've gone to a traditional PT, maybe they've had you do heel raises, maybe they've had you stretch the calf, work on that single leg balance. And while those are good, as a runner, you do need a little bit more. I wanna take you through how you can stabilize your Achilles with midfoot to rear foot stabilization, which I'll show you in one of the exercises, how to eccentrically load the Achilles tendon because it's such a strong tendon. It takes on so much load when we're running. And most of the time, this tendonitis or tendinopathy that comes on is because that Achilles can't take on as much load because it's just not as strong. So I'm gonna teach you how to eccentrically load the tendon. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can strengthen your hip into that hip extension, which is gonna allow you to decrease that load through your Achilles tendon stride after stride, which is exactly what we want so you don't have as much pain when you're running. So the first thing we're gonna do is mobilize the calf with a foam roller. So grab your foam roller, go ahead and place your calf on the foam roller like this. You can always do double leg if you'd like. You can even stack one leg on top of the calf if you want a little bit more pressure down. It's a little bit more intense, I will warn you. I'll show you it with double leg here. So all we're gonna do is roll up to the back of the knee and then all the way down to the Achilles tendon. Now, as I'm foam rolling, you can see here, my toes are facing straight up and down, which is completely fine, but I wanna show you a couple different ways that you can mobilize the calf because we do have an medial head or like the inside head of the gastroc and we have a lateral head, so we wanna make sure we get the whole calf, not just the part that's straight down the center. So as we do this, we can roll with our toes facing straight up and down. Maybe we find a tender spot and we just hold it for a second. And then what we're gonna do to mobilize the inside of our calf is we're gonna point our toes facing each other like this. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna roll all the way to our shoes, to our knees, the backs of our knees, and back. And if you find a tight area with the foam roller, this is what I want you to do. So say right here, I find it is really tight, it's really sore, especially in single leg. All we're gonna do here, just hold this position, and we're gonna pump our foot up and down with control. Up and down. We're gonna do this about five times, and then we're just gonna keep rolling. To get the outside of the calf, all we're gonna do is, since we pointed our toes in to get the inside of the calf, we're gonna point our toes out to get the outside of the calf. Just like this. You might find that one side's a little bit tighter than the other, so this is a great way to compare how your calves are feeling too. And again, if you find a tender spot, we can pump our feet up and down. Now research shows that foam rolling is really good for increasing our flexibility and our range of motion, and therefore our strength as we're going through these strengthening exercises. But the key with foam rolling is that you do want to do it for 90 seconds minimum. So that's a minute and a half. A lot of the time when someone foam rolls, it's like 10, 15 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. So let's try to up it to 90 seconds before you go through these exercises or before you go on your next run or do any sort of workout. Exercise number two, I'm gonna teach you how to eccentrically load your Achilles tendon. Now, when we come up into a heel raise, calf raise like this, we are going into a concentric contraction, which means the muscle is shortening as we are contracting it. Because we are going into plantar flexion, that's the motion that the muscles that attach into the tendon do. They do plantar flexion, so as we bring our heel up and down, it's a concentric contraction. We want to work on an eccentric contraction, which means we're lengthening the muscle as we're contracting it. So as you can imagine, that requires a little bit more control. It's a little bit harder of a motion to do, 
but this will help load the Achilles tendon, making sure it's nice and strong so you can get back to pain-free running. All you're gonna do with this one, you're gonna have a wall nearby in case you need it. You're gonna come up, bringing both heels up at the same time. I'm gonna shift my weight to the injured side, bringing my other leg up, and as I come down, I'm coming down in a tempo of one, two, three. We'll do it again. We'll come up on both legs, shift your weight to the injured side, so my pelvis and my shoulders are shifting my weight. Lift that leg up, come down one, two, three. Control is the name of the game with this. I'm not just going like this. This is not doing anything. You really wanna focus on coming down one, two, three with control, because that's how you're gonna control that eccentric contraction, which is the whole goal of this exercise. Exercise number three is all about midfoot, which is basically where your laces are in your shoe, to rear foot, which is your heel, and we're gonna learn to stabilize those two. A lot of the time when someone has pain that's more on the bottom part of their heel with Achilles tendonitis, it means that the midfoot to rear foot has some instability. So let me show you with this shoe what that looks like. If we have instability between this part of our foot and this part of our foot, as we lift off into when we're walking, we're pushing off the ground, we're lifting our heel up, and then we're taking a stride. So as we lift up, ideally we're lifting up our rear foot and our midfoot in a very in sync pattern. It's working together. So if you can imagine where the Achilles tendon attaches to the heel, if there's instability between the rear foot and the midfoot, what happens is the rear foot where your heel is lifts off early in the gait cycle or early every time that you're running. It's not in sync, it's way too early, which means that Achilles tendon is lengthening every single time that you're taking a stride, whether you're walking or you're running. Now, this is just going to stretch an inflamed or pissed off tendon, which means you're gonna be stuck in that pain cycle. So we wanna start to stabilize the midfoot where our laces are in our shoe to our rear foot, which is where our heel is and where that Achilles tendon attaches down into. When we can stabilize both, the heel will start to stay down longer in that gait cycle and it will work. It will lift up when it needs to, but it's not gonna lift up too early causing that length in that Achilles tendon every single time we take a stride. So let's go through exercise number three so we can get rid of that instability. With this exercise, it's called skiers, and we're gonna have both feet a couple inches apart facing straight ahead, hands on your hips, and then your shoulders and your hips are in line with each other, which is in line with your ankles. So we're hinging at our ankles with this one. It's not a really big movement. All we're gonna do is slightly lean forward, so our toes are starting to grip the ground, they're pushing into the ground to stabilize, and then we push back. So again, I'm just slightly leaning forward, my heels staying on the ground. I'm starting to stabilize in that midfoot to forefoot, which is our middle of our foot to our toes, ball of our foot and our toes, and we push back with our toes. What I'm not doing is I'm not lifting my heels up, I'm not leaning too far forward to where I'm just falling forward. It's a really small movement. And I'm also not hinging with my butt back, hinging at my hips. Everything's in one straight line, small movement forward, and then small movement backwards. I would try two sets of 10 with this one. It's a really small controlled movement. You might not think you're doing it right, but I would do it on the side, like the side view in front of a mirror so you can just make sure you're not hinging back at your hips. You're not falling too far forward. For the fourth exercise, I'm gonna take my shoe off. So it's just my sock. You can always put a towel over your foot and I'm gonna find a wall. Now this is the exercise for hip extension, which is really important that we focus on that glute max extension, focus on that glute max stability because it's shown in the research to take pressure off of our Achilles tendon when we're running. It's already taking on a ton of load. It doesn't need excessive load through our Achilles because at the end of the day, the less load through our Achilles, the less pain you're gonna be in and you're not gonna be stuck in that pain cycle. So go ahead and lay on your side. So your side that has pain is on top. So if I have left Achilles tendonitis, then my left side's on top. I'm gonna lay on the ground. From this position, my pelvis is facing straight ahead and my butt is a little, a couple inches from the wall, I would say, like a, maybe five inches from the wall. 
I'm gonna have my pelvis facing straight ahead, my toes are facing straight ahead. So now you can see my hip is in a little bit of extension. It's not excessively extended back. I'm keeping my pelvis neutral. I'm not flexing from my lumbar spine. Everything's in neutral at the pelvis. Toes facing straight. And all I'm gonna do is push my heel into the wall, come up and down. So it's a two part series. I'm bringing my leg up and down while my toes face straight ahead. I'm not rotating out like this. Toes face straight ahead. And now I'm pushing my heel into the wall for a little bit of that hip extension contraction. Coming down and up. This is a slow and controlled motion, making sure I'm just adding a little bit of resistance, pushing my heel into the wall, which is why you may want a towel. A sock works fine too. I recommend two sets of 10 for this exercise. This one's really good if you just need more hip stability. Maybe you have a um, tight gluteus medius on the side of your hip, or you know you have some hip drop. This is a really good exercise to do as well. Hope you enjoyed these exercises. And if you have any questions, comment below. If you want a full rehab program, I recommend going through the foot and ankle program. It's helped thousands of runners get out of that Achilles pain, and I will link that below if you're interested.